Okay, here we are again. Grade three, core English. Last class of the week, class three. And we're on page 20. Page 20 is about writing stories. So here's part of the story. So you read this and read it two or three times until you understand exactly what's being written about here. When you understand that, now you can continue with the work in the book. Pay attention to how the story has been written. It's in paragraphs. The writer uses a new paragraph when there's a change of place, time or speaker. So you've got four paragraphs. And it tells you what's happening in each one of the paragraphs. There's a character. The reader finds a lot out about the main person in the story, the main character. Their name, their age, what they're like. And then you have the setting, where the story is taking place. Some interesting details about the house and the weather and the noises. And all that information is here. So that's what you get from reading the story. What you do is finish the story. It's not a finished story, it needs an ending. So you need new paragraphs wherever necessary because of changes in time and place and so on. Write a paragraph plan to help you plan your story. In the plan, write a sentence that sums up what's happening in each paragraph. Remember to use a new paragraph when you change any of the following. Right, so that's what you're going to do. Remember to include details about what the house looks like inside as well as noises and smells. If the house becomes a happy house, you might want to talk about the outside so it doesn't look so sad anymore. You know, if you make it look all bright and pretty yellow curtains and a lovely yellow door, it's going to look much nicer than it does now. When you're writing your story, you need to draw a chart like the one below, which shows the skills that you need. Check and edit your work as, as you go along and put ticks in the boxes. So, you're trying to make a happy ending. So, does your story do that? Yes, no, or some of the time. New paragraphs, have you used them in the right places? Have you used good, strong adjectives to give information about things? Have you give, are the characters shown as though they, how, sorry, are the characters shown through what they look, do and say? The senses used to describe the house, strong verbs used like cried and kicked and, and screamed and make sure the spelling's okay. So you want to go through everything and now you've finished your story. So you can talk to somebody else about this and see if there are ways that you can improve the story. And that's the end of chapter one, unit one. Grade three, workbook, page six. Powerful verbs. Well, we've talked about powerful verbs in the um, main textbook. So now let's have a look at this. A. Draw lines to connect these powerful verbs with the correct definition. So you've got these words here, which are powerful verbs, very descriptive, and you need to connect them to the meanings with a line. Now make a list of some verbs that have the same meaning as the verbs in the clouds, but are more interesting. One example has been given for you. So walk. You've got creep. You can creep. You can sneak, you can slink, you can run, you can dash, you can whiz around, you can eat, you can gobble, you can stuff your mouth. Find some words that have the same meaning as these words. Now, C. Write these sentences again using more interesting verbs than walk, run and eat. So you've got a sentence, a cat walked up behind a bird. You've got to write a sentence where the word walked has been replaced by a much more interesting word. And do the same thing for the other, three, other two sentences. Now then, here we have a self-assessment. 
So you have to write your name and your, the date here. And this is your explanation. This one, I understand and could do this very well. This face is very ordinary. I understand, but I'm not confident. And this one's sad. I don't understand and find this difficult. So what you're going to do is you're going to read these sentences and then you're going to put a happy face or a, a, you're going to put a face, one of these faces, into one of these boxes. You're going to, for each line, you're going to put one face. So if, you're, if you like this, then you put a happy face. If you don't like this, you put a sad face. If you're not, not too bad, you put one in the middle. And you do that for all of these sentences. Now, at the bottom, you're going to tell me what you, what you want help with. So if you need more help with spelling, you say, I would like more help with spelling, teacher. I would like more help with understanding how to pronounce the TH sound. I'd like more help with verbs. I'd like more help with adjectives. You write here one thing, the most important thing, the thing you're finding most difficult, and then I can help you with it more than I'm already at. That's the end of class time for today. End of class three, end of this week, and we'll be back next week.